Hello everyone, and welcome to our YouTube channel, Let's Scratch. We'd love to help you in your coding journey, because we not only show you how to code these great projects, but also explain how the code works. And we will explain every topic with real-life examples, to get better understanding of what is going on. By the end of this series, you will be able to understand each and every feature of Scratch and the basic terminologies in coding world. We aim to bridge the gap between education and technology by bringing programming at your doorstep. So without wasting our precious time, let's get started. Scratch was originally created in 2003 at the MIT Kindergarten Research Group. To make it easy for kids to learn, they decided to make it a visual programming language, also known as VPL. This means you write your code with blocks instead of letters and numbers. Since all the blocks always do exactly what they're told, it's tough to write code that doesn't work at all. But be careful! It's still very easy to create code that doesn't do what you expect it to do. The different parts of Scratch Now that you know where Scratch comes from, let's learn about the modern version of Scratch. There are seven different elements to Scratch that you need to know to get good at coding. The interface, the sprites, the stage, the blocks, the costumes, the backdrops, and the sounds. So what are you waiting for? Let's jump in. Interface The interface controls how a program looks on the screen. A program like Scratch has many coding options you can click on to do different things. When you use a program like Scratch, what you see when you go to the website is called its interface. The interface for Scratch will change a little bit over time, as new features are made by the Scratch team. This is what the interface for the current version of Scratch looks like. There are three main areas of the interface. The sprite area in the bottom right is for adding different characters and objects to your game. The Scratch workspace area is where you'll create your code, adjust costumes, and make any other changes in Scratch. And the stage is where you play your game. The areas won't have these borders in the actual program. This just helps highlight each separate area, so you can see each one more easily. A good understanding of how these work together, will help you create your projects in no time. Sprites Imagine a game without any characters or objects. That would just be a blank screen. You need something on the screen to have some fun. In Scratch, you can add these different characters or objects to your projects. Things like a cartoon character walking around flying balls, and even objects in the background like a tree, or setting sunset. Scratch calls these characters and object sprites. Scratch doesn't stop you from making as many sprites as you want, but be careful. While more sprites seem like they would be more fun, having too many can make it hard to play your game. Sprite Area The sprite area is where you can see and change all of the different sprites you're using in your project. See the different boxes at the top of the sprite area? Here you can change things like the sprite's name, size, and location, using the X and Y boxes, as well as whether you can see the sprite or not, and which way it is facing. The sprite area is also where you add sprites to your project. There are four ways to add a new sprite. You can choose one. You can paint one of your own. You can use a random sprite. Or, you can load a picture you have saved on your computer. Bitmaps and Vectors Now that you know how to get your sprites, you need to know about the two different types of sprites. Bitmaps and Vectors Bitmap sprites are drawn with pixels, which are tiny, tiny dots on the screen. Everything that you see on the screen is made up of pixels. The number of pixels on your computer screen is called your resolution. Bitmap sprites usually have better color and shading, since each pixel can be just the right color it needs to be. If you might need to edit the sprite after you've drawn it, it's better to use a vector sprite which makes changing things really easy. Usually photos or pictures are bitmaps, and hand-drawn cartoon-like characters are vectors. The stage The stage is where your finished project is shown. The stage can have different backdrops and all of the sprites you add. If you add more than one backdrop, you can choose to switch between them using code blocks. Using a backdrop can be a nice way to add some style to your project without getting in the way of your sprites. Backdrops are always bitmap images and you can edit them 
or create your own the same way you do with sprites. You'll also see a green flag and a red stop sign in the upper left corner of the stage. You can start or stop your project using these simple icons. The stage also has three buttons in the top right corner. The first button puts the stage into mini mode. If you have a lot of blocks and you want to see more of them at once, you can use this button to make more room. The second button is the default view of the stage. It should be what you see when you first start a new project. The last button is the zoom, also known as the player mode button. It doesn't quite expand to full screen mode, just to the full size of the window that Scratch is in. It hides the other areas of Scratch, so you won't see the workspace or sprite areas. This is useful when you just want to play the project. If your project uses the mouse a lot, you should test it in the zoom or player mode view to make sure it works right. Code or script Just adding sprites onto the stage doesn't seem very fun. You need them to do something. You tell your sprites what to do by combining blocks together. This is known as the script or code. Block types Scratch groups blocks together by the type of action they create. Here are the different types of blocks and what they do. Motion blocks are dark blue and control where a sprite goes. Looks blocks are purple and can switch the backdrop or the costume for sprites. They can also make the sprite say something or even make it disappear. Sound blocks are a purplish pink and let your project play fun noises. Events blocks are yellow and can send messages between sprites. Control blocks are light orange and control what other blocks do rather than the sprite, like make the block repeat itself or stop the script. Sensing blocks are light blue and sense things like if the sprite touches a certain color or if a key is pressed. Operators blocks are green and let you combine things together or do math. Variables blocks are dark orange and let you create special blocks that can remember a number or a word. My blocks are red and there are no presets. This is where you can make your very own blocks. Block shapes. There are six different types of block shapes. Hat blocks, stack blocks, reporter blocks, condition blocks, C blocks, and end blocks. Hat blocks are used to start your code. Without a hat block, any blocks you add won't do anything because nothing will tell them when to start. Stack blocks can have blocks connected at the top or bottom. Use these to make your sprite do things or change in some way. Reporter blocks are oval shaped and they tell you about other things in your project. For example, they can answer questions like where is the mouse or what time is it? These reporter blocks have to be added to other blocks with oval cutouts to work. Condition blocks are shaped like a hexagon. They are a special type of reporter block that only says yes or no. C blocks are for adding other blocks inside the C area. You can put as many blocks as you like inside the C area. They can make the blocks inside repeat themselves or check if other things are happening. End blocks or cap blocks can't have anything connected under them. They are used to stop your code. Backdrops Well, good news. You can add backdrops to make it more exciting. And you don't have to stop at just one backdrop. Your project can have multiple ones. You add a backdrop the same way as adding a sprite in with the four same options. You can choose a backdrop the Scratch creators already made, draw one yourself, or load one from your computer. You can also choose a surprise backdrop, which will choose a random one that's already been created. Sounds You can make your Scratch projects a lot more fun by adding sound effects to them. Just like you can use a sprite that's already made, draw your own or upload one. The sound section of Scratch lets you select from the hundreds of options already made. Record your own sound using your microphone. Choose a randomly selected sound or upload a sound from a file. Once you've chosen your sound, you can change it to fit your project. You can make it louder or softer. You can make it go faster or slower. You can make it play the sound backward. You can even make it sound like a robot made the noise. You can make whatever sound best fits your specific project. Let's get started. Now that you know a little bit about the different parts of Scratch, it's time to dive in and learn more about all the different programming blocks and how they can bring your project to life. 
Each video will teach you a little bit more about the different types of blocks and how you can use them to make some really fun games. Are you excited? Let's go! What if you need to get rid of some blocks? If you right click on a block, you can select to delete the block or drag it off to the left of the blocks area. Well that's all we have for you in this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.